Hey, what is up? Welcome back to another Gunpla review, and today I'm taking a look at these two absolutely badass mobile suits from the PS3 game Mobile Suit Gundam Side Story Missing Link. So once again, these are two premium Bandai kits. That is the Oryx 78 XX Pixie Fred Reber Custom and the absolutely astounding looking Oryx 79 GSW Slave Wraith Parachute Pack. Now this thing gives the easy A to run for its money and makes me wonder why I missed out on the high grade ground Gundam a couple of years ago. What was wrong with me? As usual when it comes to rare or hard to get Gunpla, especially P Bandai kits like this, this video would not have been possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Baiyi. So if you want some of these kits of your own, there's a link down there in the description to Baiyi. And if you sign up with that link, you will get 1000 yen off your first purchase. And there's a missing link joke in there somewhere to do with the game and not putting in the description, but let's just get on with this. So there is the two of them out of the box and just snapped together with a little bit of panel lining and some of the essential stickers which of course are the foil ones for the cameras, eyes, etc. As for the color correcting stickers, I did not use them. I will talk about them a little bit later on. As for the panel lining, it is just towards the front and a lot of the essential detailing only. So of course that right there is the pixie on the left, on the right there is the slave wraith and I'm going to talk about them one at a time. Starting off with the pixie. So there's the full 360 degree spin of the Fred Rebers version of the Gundam Pixie. So this kit right here is just a color variant of 2018's Gundam Pixie. That once again was also a P Bandai kit so it wasn't available through regular means. So it's one of those P Bandai original kits which seem to become a little bit more common as the years go by. This color right here really does suit this kit. It looks very, very nice. As for the stickers though, there are quite a few color correcting ones in here which I did not use. As usual, I only used the ones for on the head camera and sights. That is number one and two. They attach onto the front head camera as well as round here on the rear one. Three there was used on the weapons which we'll be looking at later on. And we've got some color correcting black stickers. Those are for on the triangle section on the knees, as well as around back here on the elbows. Number five there is for on this lower black section. I didn't use this, I just used a panel liner. It's faster, easier, looks better. 10 there is for on the cockpit hatch, so that should be a slightly different color. To me, that's not different enough to make it really all that worthwhile. These purplish blue ones, number six, those are for on these lower sections of the armor, so those should be that color, not gray. And finally, that big ol' number 12 is for the inside section of the neck, which is probably the worst one of the bunch. So yeah, this version of the Gundam Pixie, which until now have been called a Fred Rebers custom, I just looked at the katakana, it's Fred Rebers custom, may not be all that perfectly color accurate, but it still looks absolutely awesome in this dark and grey color scheme. So moving on to the next kit in this review, and that of course is this awesome Slave Wraith. So there's that full 360 degree spin of the Slave Wraith, which is one badass looking mobile suit. I absolutely adore this. But there's one thing I have to say is, technically, isn't this a Gundam? Even though it's not set in its name, just like the EZ-8, this is a variant of the ground Gundam. All that's changed is that head with the enhanced sensors, as well as that backpack with that extra thrust. But in general, it is just a ground Gundam, I guess that technically makes it a Gundam. So this does take me back to that age-old argument of what makes a mobile suit a Gundam or not. As far as I'm concerned, I would say it seems to be that V-fin on its head, but that doesn't go for the EZ-8, so I have no idea. So this mobile suit does look really cool, and as you listen out the differences, like the head and the backpack, I forgot about that enhanced shoulder armor, which has some nice extra panel lining opportunities up there. In case you're curious, this is in the exact same shades of plastic as the Gundam Pixie right here. Because sometimes when there are some suits that are similar but not exactly the same, they do use a slightly different shade of plastic sometimes which can get a little bit annoying but that's not the case right here. So this right here is the included sticker sheet. It's not quite as bad as what we saw with the Pixie but it's up there definitely. Most of the stickers aren't color correcting thankfully. The worst of the bunch is number 7 here but this is quite a regular occurrence even with some master grades and that is for the little V section right there on its crotch that should be yellow on top of that red but in this case it is not. One and two up there once again these are the head cameras. That is that one in the front of this awesome enhanced headgear. 
and this one around here on the back of the head. As for these ones up here on the shoulders, on the back as well as on the front, those are five and six here. Once again, colored foil stickers. As for 9 and 10 on there, it doesn't say in the manual what these are for, but I can only assume 9 is for that big triangle on the chest, and the other two are from these triangles on the sides of the legs. Lastly then, the big black one here for 8, that was actually two stickers that's on the backpack, and number 11 there is for the Slave Wraith logo on the shield. As for size comparison, these are fairly average sized for early UC Federation suits, and there they are beside the Mudrock Gundam as well as the G40, as well as beside Azaku from Gundam the Origin and the Blue Destiny Space Type. Blue Destiny Space Type. Blue Destiny Space Type. So moving right on into the accessories, and there is both the Slave Wraith and the Gundam Pixie with absolutely everything that they come with, divided right down the middle. So the Slave Wraith there is rocking a heftier set of accessories, and definitely on the whole, the better kit if you want a lot of stuff. We've got that parachute pack which came with the premium Bandai version of the ground Gundam. We've got that big old ground Gundam cannon, missile launcher, beam rifle, machine gun, the two beam sabers, as well as an alternate right hand for holding weapons and left posed dynamic hand. As for what we get over here with the pixie, it's not quite as much as what we saw with the slave wraith, but it's still quite a nice little set. That of course is the pixie's iconic daggers, pair of Uzis, alternate slashing effects for using with the daggers, and these very unique Uzi holding hands, which I'll get to soon. But first, let's take a look at the Slave Wraith. Somehow I forgot to put the shield in with the accessories, so that is included too. So first off with the Slave Wraith, we've got a fairly standard set of beam sabers in that classic pink. When these aren't in use, of course you can pop out the beam to have them in their deactivated mode. And just like with the ground Gundam, this little panel here opens up. You can pop that off completely, attach the beam saber inside just like so, and then pop it back on for storage. The exact same applies to the other side, and they can be posed open like this for if you want to show it with the hatch open and the slave wraith reaching down for that beam saber. But for now, closing it up. So first up, weapon-wise, is the machine gun. So this, once again, is the exact same ground-type machine gun we would have seen before. This is held in the standard hand, so this thing doesn't seem to have a trigger. It does have this move-back, folding-out stock mechanism, and a flip-out handle here. And the Slave Wraith here has no trouble whatsoever holding that with both hands. So that's what it looks like in a pose. Next up, then, is that ground Gundam-style beam rifle. This attaches into the trigger finger hand. This one is that typical high-grade sandwich hand comprising of two parts. That is what it looks like attached. This does have a foil sticker for the sights. We have one of those side-to-side -side swinging handles right here. And one thing I did notice about this is it's quite inclined to kind of drop down like this. The handle likes to slide out of the hand ever so slightly down here sometimes, which can be a little bit annoying. But besides that, still pretty awesome. The next weapon we have in here is that missile launcher. It's all in the one color. It does look extremely nice though. The magazine up top here can be removed, which is something I always love. And it's got this handy dandy little moving front handle. Next up then and last up weapon wise is that absolutely iconic ground Gundam cannon. So just like with the ground Gundam, this does feature a lot of little segmented parts for it to disassemble for storage. But of course, unlike the ground Gundam, the Slave Wraith does not come with that awesome backpack for storing the split up cannon. So that means there isn't really a point in disassembling this thing here, but it does have a swing out handle on the inside there. Whoop, bye bye hand. And just like we saw with the missile launcher, the magazine can be removed. But then again, the whole thing does come apart, like I mentioned, for storage when it is included with the ground Gundam. I almost forgot to mention we do have that widespread extra hand in here. This is a left hand only, but it does look absolutely beautiful. There is that shield, of course, the Slave Wraith logo is a sticker. It's in the matching colors of gray and dark blue to the mobile suit itself. We do have this drop down segment back here. So that can be placed on the ground just like we saw before for using with that big old cannon. And this does have a cool extending feature here, which allows it to be swung forward and used as a melee weapon, which is pretty cool. But this section is a little bit on the loose side, so I find it does pop out every now and then when you're trying to do that with it. As per usual with Gunpla, this attaches onto 
the arm just like so, simple as. And once again, like I mentioned, this does have that swing out gimmick, which is a little bit jank. But it's still pretty cool that that is included for those big old shield punches when it doesn't fall off. Last up then is the parachute pack. So this is a big old bulky backpack, which looks pretty cool. The attachment point is this right here, so it doesn't mean it is directly compatible with most Gunpla because it's got a single point of attachment as well as these little segments that point out like this which may get in the way of other kits. But the main reason it's not compatible with everything is it does not have that standard double peg. But the backpack back here which it attaches to, that does. Oh, awesome. So anyway, to attach that parachute pack, you just take off that little segment there, you've got your little attachment point. The parachute pack then attaches onto that. So yeah, if you want to use this parachute pack with any other Gunpla, now you can. Which automatically makes me wonder, can we use it with the Pixie? So the Pixie does have the standard set of holes there, so popping that on. And there we go, perfect fit and looking beautiful. But I will mention for some reason or another, it is really hard to get the backpacks off the Pixie without a part separator. But anyway, now it's off. So anyway, there is what the Slave Wraith will look like with the parachute pack attached with some of the weapons, which is the shield and the machine gun. And this mobile suit right here, it looks fantastic. I love this. I love it to bits. So now moving on to the Gundam Pixie. And although this may not come with as much stuff as what we saw with the Slave Wraith, it has some interesting stuff that might appeal to some people more. For example, it's got daggers and... I shit you not, a pair of Uzis. Now that's pretty awesome. And you know what's even more awesome? The fact that you can pull out the magazine from the Uzi and replace it with the dagger. So it is an Uzi with a dagger for the magazine. Just think about that. That is nuts and awesome. So anyway, there is the Gundam Pixie with its daggers looking pretty awesome. These can be held either way, so just like what you're seeing right here, which is that reverse grip, or they can be held in that standard way for that stabby, stabby action. So we do have two styles of beam effects in here. That is the standard looking style right here, which is a broad pink beam blade. But we've also got some vigorous effect parts. I'd give these about a mm, 6 out of 10 on the vigorous spectrum. So that right there is what they look like attached. So these are some awesome slashing effects. These are the sort of things I wish came with Gunpla more often. They definitely give it so much movement, dare I say, vigor even. That is pretty cool. This I like a lot and would love to see more of. When they aren't in use, you can just pop out the beam effect. And those handles can be stored in the side skirts. As simple as that right there. So that is pretty cool. Next up then in here, we've got the pair of Uzi. So these are... Just three pieces of plastic, but man, do they look cool. We've got a sticker there for the side, and these can be used in the standard holding hands. These actually come with some of the most interesting holding hands I've ever seen. So the whole handle slots out from below them like this, and for the holding variant, the holding hand and the handle are attached. So they are one piece. So they attach on just like that right there. And the reason that this was done, I believe, is because the magazine segment down here can be removed like so from the hand. And just like we saw before, that is where the beam daggers can be attached. So that is pretty cool. So finally, there we go. There is the Gundam Pixie with both of those Uzis. And I can't get over just how over the top crazy and awesome this right here is. I love these. I absolutely adore these. So when these aren't in use, you just pop on that handle that was on them before, the standard one like this, and then they can just clip onto these little segments back here on the butt flap. And that's what they look like attached on there. Finally, there is both the high-grade Gundam Pixie Fred Reber custom and the high-grade Slave Wraith up on a shelf with some equipment attached, just so you can get an idea of what they will look like up in a display. These are both two very cool looking mobile suits for very different reasons. One's light, fast, and agile, and the other one is heavy, bulky, and badass. So of course these would not be P-Bandai kits without some leftover parts, and as for the Pixie over here we've got the vast majority of one of these machine guns. This however is missing the clip section from down here, but you could borrow one 
from the slave rates side skirt because they do fit if you pop this off it does attach on here for if you wanted to give this to either or mobile suit if so if you do have both you have the choice of doing that sure the slave wraith will be missing one of those off its skirting but you do gain yourself a machine gun so you can have two the pixie also comes with a widespread dynamic hand once again exactly the same as the one over here with the slave wraith it does not have a back on it and the backs of the pixie's hands are not directly attachable to this so if you want to use them with it there will be modifications required as for the slave rate though what we get in here is all the parts essentially to make this into a gray version of the ground gundam so that is pretty much all of the head you can see here i'm pretty sure the eyes and the muzzle that you need for this are the ones that are up here in this guy's head we've got the entire shoulders these are missing the polycaps but once again you can just use the ones that are up there we've got the crotch in that dark blue which goes in there and then the cockpit door in that dark blue so these are the parts you can use to make the slave wraith into a gray ground gundam also we do have this as well which is the entire backpack segment from the ground gundam of course you don't get the big container part for putting this weapon right here into but we still do get this backpack which is pretty cool and definitely would be handy for some kind of custom project this is also directly compatible with most Gunpla because of these two parts, so you could even pop it on to one of your 30-minute mission kits. So that is pretty cool. So anyway, it's articulation time, starting with the Slave Wraith and from the head down. First, I will mention that the build quality of this kit is incredibly good. Once again, this is based on the high-grade ground Gundam from a couple of years ago, and now I want 50 of that particular kit because it is so well. It's almost perfect. So at the neck, it is that typical high-grade polycap we've seen for quite some time. That nets us our giggity 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 goo. There it is all the way up, all the way down. So it's about average. There it is, round and round. Side to side tilt as well. So next up, the polycap inside of the shoulder is aligned to move it forward and back like so. This then is your standard ball joint. Quite tight, feels good. There's the 360 spin. Next up, the bend at the elbow is perfect. Look at that. That full rotation up there at the upper arm. The wrist here is a pretty cool double ball joint. So that cylinder there is on a ball joint inside. And then we've got the ball joint of the wrist, giving us some absolutely astonishing articulation right there. The joint inside the torso of this is incredible. It is giving us quite the range of motion but that does come at a bit of a cost. This does pop out quite a bit. As you can see, we've got the side to side rotation there, as well as a ball joint orientated towards the front. So this does give us a nice little bit of side to side rotation, which even makes the segments in the torso here move side to side as well, which gives it a natural twist. But when it comes to the ab crunch, which is quite nice, it is easy to overextend that and pop it off. But regardless, it is impressive. Pretty standard front skirting armor, which can move up and slightly side to side. It's on a ball joint. Typical side skirting as well, which can move up and down, rotate to the back, rotate to the front, probably can go all the way around. Again, typical average paralyzed butt flap. So inside of the crotch here, we've got that side to side joint so that moves from there to there to raise and lower the legs so when it comes to this slave wraith's kick there it is all the way up to the front drop that down so you can get a little bit more that makes quite the difference i love that joint there it is all the way out to the back it is blocked because of that paralyzed butt flap and moving those side skirts out of the way like so can it pull off the splits yes it most certainly can so because of this raised armor bit at the front there, we do not get the full spin right there. So there to there is all we get. So we do have a two point bend at the knee there that nets us this right here, which is very, very nice. So at the ankle here, we do have a double jointed system. That is this one that rocks forward and back like this for your flexion and extension. And then we've got a ball joint down here like so. The armor can move up and down like this. And as usual, let's check out that functional movement with the foot planted on the whoa ground so if i remember correctly from the runners most of the joints on this are from the gym ground type so if you've got that kit you know exactly what this can do so there it is all the way to the front that's very nice we do have a minor toe bend there 
There it is, all the way to the back. Again, very nice. And there is the side to side pivot. Now that is a bit limited. I could have asked for a little bit more side to side. So yeah, on the whole, the articulation of the high-grade Slave Wraith is quite good, just a little bit limited right there at that ankle and a bit at the waist. But once again, for an early UC design, I have to say, I am impressed. So next up in here, of course, is the Gundam Pixie. So this uses a lot of the same joints as what we saw on the Slave Wraith, which come from the Ground Gundam, once again, if I am not mistaken. Not Ground Gundam, I mean Ground Gym, because the Ground Gundam has the Ground Gym's joints, once again, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I went and got the runner. It is from the Ground Gym, that is HGUC202, which was from 2016. Also some shield bits left over I never mentioned, but you cannot build that full shield. So anyway, this is the same bulletproof build we saw with the Slave Wraith, looking good so far. We've got that double jointed polycap neck there, but it feels a little bit limited, like the top ball isn't giving us as much as it should. So there isn't really much of a giggity giggity there. So we've got up and down, side to side, that gives us the full 360 spin. And there is that side to side pivot. Once again, just like the Slave Wraith, the polycaps give us a forward motion in the shoulders there. So that's what they do. Inside of that then, it is a ball joint. Full 360 spin right there. There is the arm raised all the way up without popping out. Full rotation at the upper arm. Same awesome bend at the elbow. The pixie does have the same kind of cylinder in there with a ball joint down here and the ball joint right here for the wrist. But we have this moving piece of plastic that moves a little bit with that. But in general, it restricts the overall movement of this joint that was quite nice with the slave wraith. Here it's fine, it's pretty much basic ball joint. Again, the same is going on inside of this torso, a very similar joint, but because of the different armor, this is very restricted. So the top ball in here isn't really giving us all that much at all. There is the side to side rotation, it gets blocked, and once again, not as nice as the Slave Wraith. Skirting armor, once again, ball joints, these are attached on the runner, but you can cut them apart as per usual. So up, down, out and in. Side skirts the same, that is up and down, fairly blocked up the way. There it is to the front, there it is to the back. Another basic paralyzed butt flap back here. Same side to side rocking joint inside the waist section. Dropping that down on that side and checking out that kick. So once again, exactly the same as we saw before. Blocked to the back like we saw with the Slave Wraith. And the full splits once again, just like with the Slave Wraith. Unlike that mobile suit though, we've got the full spin here at the upper leg because of the different lighter armor. Same double jointed bend at the knee right here. And I will mention because I just saw it happen. Be wary of the red section of this thing's V-fin. This falls out quite literally all of the time. So if there's anything you need to glue on this kit, it's that. If you lose something that small, chances are you're going to lose it forever. So we got the same ankle system here up and down, but restricted compared to the Slave Wraith. Ball joint down below, right there. Moving armor here, gets a little bit blocked at times depending on where it is and let's pop that off for that functional movement. So once again, this is the poses we can get out of the leg without the foot coming off the ground for our ground poses. So anyway, there it is all the way to the front and look at that bend at the toe. Beautiful, right there. All the way to the back, then we get this, so very limited to the back. And there it is, side to side and limited there, sadly. I hate when that joint is limited. It's so important for those big, wide spread, dynamic ground poses. So even though it's got a lot of similar joints to what we saw with the Slave Wraith, this isn't quite as good on the whole as the Slave Wraith. It has some of the same limited joints at the ankles and waist, but this has more limited joints at the wrists and the neck and the waist is quite limited in comparison, so not really all that great here. For an incredibly light and agile suit, I would expect this to be a little bit better. So anyway, that right there is it for the review of the Premium Bandai High Grade Gundam Pixie, Fred Reber version, and the High Grade Slave Wraith. Once again, that is Premium Bandai. So the Slave Wraith to me is gold tier, the Pixie is silver. So these kits are only 200 yen in the difference, 
Sure, the slave wraith is 200 yen more expensive than the pixie, but you get so much more stuff, the articulation is better, the color accuracy is better, and you can choose to build this as a grey version of the ground Gundam. There is just so much about it that is better than the pixie. The pixie is a fine, standard high grade. It does have some issues with color accuracy. The articulation is not the greatest, but it is still a very nice kit. The Uzis are awesome. It's got an awesome pair of effect parts for its daggers and on the whole is a nice high grade kit. But the slave wraith is phenomenal. I missed out on 2018's Ground Gundam and now I want 20 of the kit just because it's so good. And the Slave Wraith is a nice, dark, heavily armored, awesome variant. You get so many weapons, that parachute pack, some very nice articulation, and the color accuracy is quite good. So if you were tossing up between the two of these, I would say 100% go for the Slave Wraith. There is a gym coming out very soon which will be very like the Slave Wraith right here. That also comes with the parachute pack, but we get an extra missile launcher in there. So that one will be coming up on the channel sometime soon as well. But anyway, if you do want any of the kits you saw in this video, there is a link down there in the description. You can get yours through Baiyi. Remember, if you sign up through my link, you will get 1,000 yen off your first order. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Consider leaving a like, it does help out the channel quite a bit. And as always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. As always, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. Whether you just watch them, like them, share them, or support me on the channel memberships and Patreon like Craig Jerry, Kaiser721, Bolwick, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, and Hank Handsome. Tenequatrupagina.